Hi, my name is Bartosz Bugac. I am a member of the Forensic Computational Geometry Laboratory at the Heidelberg University. Our lab works on computational analysis of cultural heritage. Today I am going to show you our newest results in applying geometric deep learning on archaeological finds. Cuneiform script is one of the oldest human writing systems. It spans more than 3000 years. It is written by impressing a rectangular stylus into wet clay, leaving wet-shaped impressions. Reading cuneiform from photographs is challenging. Only through the interplay of light and shadow, by holding and turning the tablets in sunlight, the writing becomes readable. This is why cuneiform tablets are preferably acquired in 3D, to record a digital representation that is decipherable. In previous work we published a comprehensive digital dataset of cuneiform tablets, first of its kind in breadth and depth called HiQbeta. It consists of 1977 cuneiform tablets as 3D meshes, with metadata from the Cuneiform Digital Library Initiative. In this work we focused on predicting the period of origin of a cuneiform tablet using only the acquired 3D mesh, its geometrical shape. We first investigate a raster image baseline. HiQbeta contains rasterized views from six sides of its cuneiform tablets. These are colored by a pre-computed MSII surface curvature. We cut rectangular patches from the tablet projections and train a ResNet50 neural network. The training depends on proper orientation of the tablets in three dimensions. HiQbeta provides manually orientated tablets with script facing forward and leveled horizontally. We can avoid this manual orientation step if we learn directly on the native domain of the data, the 3D manifolds. There are many different approaches to geometric learning. Two approaches are of interest here, PointNet and SplineNet. For our purposes, we want interpretable results. That is, any patterns in the intermediate layers of our network should have an intuitive representation and visualization. In this work, we combine these two approaches. PointNet gives us an intuitive notion of pooling and SplineNet gives us an intuitive notion of convolution. The geometric convolution considers small patches of the surface mesh and embeds these into their local tangent plane. Since these neighborhoods of vertices are unstructured, the samples of the convolutional kernel do not match any vertices. For each kernel sample, we need to interpolate neighboring vertex function values. The neighborhood of vertices is transformed into polar coordinates on basis of random vertex in the region. We do not enforce a canonical orientation. We noticed that just by using more feature layers, the neural network learns a small set of discretized orientations by itself, only allocating just as much feature layers as necessary. Our sampling grid is actually regular in polar coordinates. The nearest neighbor query is a smooth radial basis function that considers all vertices in the region. Only vertices closest to the sampling point, however, will have any influence on its value. The target value of a kernel sampling point is the sum of the vertex function values, the MSII surface curvature weighted by the distance to the kernel sample. The trainable part of the convolution are the weighting parameters of the radial basis functions. These are the values our network learns and uses to represent any patterns. We need one additional operation besides convolution for a functioning network, that is, the propagation of activation values. In the convolution step, we propagate activation values from all vertices to all vertices. In the pooling step, we subsample the mesh. Neighborhoods of the sampled vertices are aggregated, averaged, and then propagated to the chosen vertices. Our complete network topology is as follows. We begin with one MSII feature and convolve the mesh to 32 features per vertex. Then, by pooling and further convolution, the count of features is expanded to 64 per vertex. Finally, we compute the global average for the whole mesh and, through a fully connected layer, predict one of the four periods of origin. The presented network is simpler and shallower than our baseline, ResNet50, yet we outperform it. Our network takes the complete template surface into consideration, instead of randomly chosen projections of it. From the two approaches we base our work on, the convolutional operator of SplineNet does most of the heavy lifting. We predict the period of origin to an accuracy of more than 80%, given only the geometry and without extracting wedges or performing any linguistic analysis. In summary, what has actually been learned by the network that gives us such a performance? On the right we see the kernel weight parameters of the second convolutional layer. We expected to see wedge-like shapes, 
showing that the network learned to pick up on the script. This is not the case. The shapes resemble only parts of wedge-like impressions. Therefore, in future work we are going to investigate deeper networks and the visual patterns that govern specific periods of cuneiform tablets. Thank you very much for your attention.